Welcome back. In the last episode we managed to unlock the tier 4, however, here all the machines will require 512 EU per tick, which would be the whole of the power currently at our disposal. And the issue is both the battery buffer and the cabling. Our power network works on 32 volts and we are using transformers to step up to 128 when needed. So, if we want to be able to use HV machines, we first need HV batteries and cabling. And now we start to see that our base won't make it. We need 9 dusts of polyethylene for each battery, and it took about a couple of hours to get just 7. To fix that, we shall step back one tier and work on a better way of obtaining ethylene. The first step will be to make a greenhouse, we will use it for producing industrial amounts of wheat and seeds. With an automated processing chain, we work these two ingredients into mash and grain solution. We then ferment these fluids together into impure ethanol. And using three more machines, we can turn that into ethylene. While the polyethylene is being made, we can also make a couple more electrolytic cells. We shall use these to stock up the four basic gases used in almost every recipe, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen and chlorine. Next, we shall also automate the electron processing. Next, while we wait for some polyethylene to build up, we can prepare the other chemicals and parts needed. And when all the required materials and parts are ready, we finally assemble our batteries. We are going with sodium ones because these are the easiest to make. Then we swiftly make a battery buffer, but we put these parts in a chest, since we need some cabling before using these. To make the HV superconductors, we are going to need a bunch of new machinery. However, after making the first parts, we realize we need an HV roaster for one of the components. And that requires canthal, to get that, we first have to go through all of the step for obtaining chromium. And we should probably have automated that. Now that we have chromium, we can mix that to make canthal. This stuff takes a lot of time to cook, and, when it gets out of the furnace, it is still blazing hot. And it was when we tried to bath it in water that we got reminded on why we are doing all of that, our power cables are too weak. But, with the help of a battery, we managed to finish the process. Now we can finally make the HV roaster we needed, and we are going to power it with battery buffered MV power. Now we can get the last chemical we needed, which we then mix with the others to finally get the HV superconductor base material, mercury barium calcium cuprate, which we can inside a silver pipe. The next step requires a tube furnace, and a lot of power, so we start slowly buffering it with a battery. And thus we obtained our first tube. You might think that this is too low of a yield, but the next step makes this tube into 16 wires, and each wire carries 4 amps of HV power. And that last step requires again an HV machine. Or maybe two. Since this is getting annoying, let's deposit these in a chest for a moment and work on a new HV workshop room. But first we have to get rid of uninvited guests and of our old bricked blast furnaces. And there we have our new room. For the moment, we are using the cable we use for HV motors, which only carries 2 amps of power. We are going to take the power from the main LV line with our HV buffer, and we limit the amps with a machine hull. The first thing we shall do in our new room is compress some hydrogen, which we then cool down in our refrigeration setup. Finally, we liquefy it and use that for finishing our superconducting wires. Then we start replacing the silver cables we used before with the better ones. And we finish off by having the HV buffer take power from the turbine. For the moment, we are going to use that for the new part of our base while we leave the old half of our base as it was. And here we have a really dangerous place where no misclick shall happen. Finally, we do some cable hacking to make it so that the small buffer gets filled up first. We have now fixed the power capacity of our base, but, before we do any more automation or progress, we should remove the need for manual mining. To do so, we first have to find one of the unbreakable deposits spread across the map. But, 
Before putting this to use, we need to figure out how to connect this place to our base in a comfortable way. And we are going to see that after the break.